Thank you very much, Pastor Jacob Akali, my friend. That gentleman conducted the wedding of my son, Mark, and I'm very happy, I'm proud of him. And actually, when Dr. Mark Finley was here, I was remembering the days he spoke in Taipei, Taiwan, 2007, for the General Conference Youth Congress that I had the privilege to attend. And I've not seen a man so hardworking like that one. And uh, when I was the chaplain at the union, I invited him to speak to University of Nairobi. And uh, within 20 minutes, he had very nicely explained the entire second letter of Paul to Timothy and the students at the University of Nairobi were very happy. And so that net evangelism was so great, so good, and we celebrated it even in other places within the Greater Rift Valley Conference where I come from. I want to bring you greetings from my wife, Elizabeth. Uh, she's so happy and uh, she could have come, but she was just too tired. She spent a whole week traveling uh, from the US and she had just landed and she said, please go and give my greetings to New Life. One day I should be at New Life. Our children are all grown and married. I'm now a grandfather at 66 right now. I'm old enough to be a grandfather, and I'm very happy. My children are married to very many tribes. I have uh, Chikodera from Kisi. I have Nyangwana from Luoland. I have Pamwai from the Kalenjin community, and I also have Atoni from the Kikuyu community. And so I, my children are married everywhere. Amen. Amen. So I'm very glad. I'm very happy. Um, Thank you, uh, Pastor Akari, for giving me the call. When Sister Jacinta invited me, it was in the middle of the week. And uh, actually, my wife thought I was going to New Life in Eldoret. So she called the director of Pathfinders of uh, New Life Eldoret and said, this is about we are coming. So at New Life Eldoret, they were expecting me. Uh, when uh, Jacinta started talking about uh, booking me at the LMS guest house here in Nairobi, and she started talking about different things. My wife said, where are we exactly going? I said, I'm going to Nairobi. She said, I may not travel with you. Uh, please forgive me, but go and greet them. Amen? Amen? And so, because it was in the middle of the week, I could only bring greetings from my elders. But from the church, it was not possible, but please accept greetings from uh, Elder James Ty of Great Hope Church in Eldoret, and my church elder of Moy University SDA Church, uh, Dennis Mwan, who called me last evening and said, please greet them at New Life Church, uh, 5th Gong Avenue. And then also from uh, my elder of Langas, Kenneth Moriah. Munakubali Salamu Hizo from Great Rift Valley Conference. Thank you very much. I have great memories for Elder Opere, whom I met at Sekanani Pathfinder Kampuri in Masai Mara, 1996. And that's the same day I also met uh, Sister Jacinta Were. And then we were to meet also in another Kampuri with Jacinta Were uh, in 1999 at Oshkosh in Wisconsin. And I remember the tornado. Uh, I had never seen a tornado. I had heard about tornadoes on TV and in newspapers. But the tornado started coming, and uh, Jacinta had decided that she and her friend Ruth Mete were going to come outside because they didn't want to come the tent inside, another bigger tent. It was raining in bucketfuls of drops. So I saw once, and... The man in me said, go and rescue those ladies. So I went and carried Jacinta in her sleeping bag all the way from her tent and put her in the main one and then went for Ruth Mete. It was, I don't know where the energy came from, but that's what I remember about Oshkosh in Wisconsin, the first company in 1999. And for Joel Opere, uh, the following, I think December, later on that year, we also met at Moshi Cooperative College, uh, at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro, and we have been meeting always in other companies, both international and local. And I want to tell you, Engineer Opere is the recipient of the General Conference Award of the best leadership 
in Pathfinder Ministry together with another young lady called Priscilla Zawadi. Is that true or false? Brother Opere, what do you say? He received that award. He did, he did not got the general conference to receive it, but the general conference sent it here because at that time he had not had enough wings to begin flying out there to the United States to go and receive that award. But I'm very happy. And so, my dear Pathfinders, I want to let you know that I've got a soft spot for you. Actually, one of the people in this congregation, I met her parents, I was the pastor of her parents before she was born, is now here. I think she's uh, called Naom. Her mother is Florence. She was an adventurer always now. Really wonderful. Yes, I took her to Livingstone Company in 1994. She was only nine years old, and she's now a big lady. I've seen her today, and I'm so much impressed. Amen? Pathfinder ministry keeps you young, and that's why I want to say, uh, flying marines, I will go. When I say I'll go, I'll go with Jesus. Flying marines, I will go. I will go. New life, flying marines. I will, I will go. Moses couldn't ask for anything better. Unless your presence is going to go with us, Lord, we shall not go. And that's very good. Let us pray. Our oh, Father, we want to invite you into our presence. Loving Father, talk to us. We are not worthy of even mentioning your name. But you are our Father. You are our Redeemer. Speak to us. May your presence be with us in this congregation and go with us wherever we go because you will lead us and we believe this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to talk about two young boys. One of them is known as Moses Amram. Another one is called Barak Ugwedi Hawi. Hello. One of them is called Moses Amram. His mother was Jochebed. The other one is Barak Ogwedi Hawi. We don't know the mother's name. Neither do we know the father's name. But Jesus knows the name of the parents. Amen? Because parents played a vital role. Am I still being heard? As a little baby, the parents of Moses saw him very beautiful and one that is beloved of God. And so, in spite of the fact that the Pharaoh had, gave, had given an order that little children should be killed, those ones born by the Hebrew women, that Hebrew mother kept the boy secretly for how long? Nobody knows? For how long? Three months. And without fearing that the child might be killed. Later on, when it became unsafe to keep the baby, they had the courage to take the baby to the Nile. And they made a nice place for the baby. That talks nicely about a caring and judicious mother. And he had an older sister by the name Miriam. And so, as the Pharaoh's daughter went to take bath in the river Nile and saw a little baby crying, she said, oh, that must be a baby of one of the Hebrews. I will go, and that will be my own baby. And so, the baby Moses was rescued by the princess, the daughter of the Pharaoh. And then, as she was wondering who could be able to take to breastfeed the baby, Miriam appeared and said she could be able to know, to identify the mother. And so you can imagine, Jochebed stayed with Moses in the palace and instructed Moses for all the time until Moses grew up. Being inculcated with the religion, the values, the core values of the Hebrew nation, of the Hebrew God. Amen? Blessed are those mothers who bring their children 
and nurture them in the fear of the Lord. That is how Moses was brought up. And in spite of the fact that he grew up in the palace to become a prince and the next heir to the, to the, to the, to the throne of the superpower of that time, Moses despised all that, looking at a better kingdom, the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Of course, I'll talk about some mothers and uh, what they do. Somebody has said, little birds learn how to fly while they are still in their eggshells. That is a research that was done by one Dr. Mugeni. Dr. Mugeni is an Adventist from Tanzania. And the BBC documented his research and said little birds can be able to learn how to fly while they are still in their eggshells. That would mean children can be instructed and learn how to behave in their future while they are still in their mother's womb. Amen? And so that is a credit that goes to the mothers. Remember one mother who was given instruction on how to bring up her baby. You remember Mrs. Manoa, the mother of Samson? Women are, are unsung heroes. They do great things. And the credit goes to the men. I'm sorry for this. But it's true. Very many women have done great things for the Lord. But nobody has talked about them. They will talk about the men. And uh, when we shall come to the story of Barak Hawi, you'll see how even <laughs> they counted the men, 5,000 men, without mentioning their wives, without mentioning their children, without even mentioning the name of this pathfinder. Somebody, is it possible to project Matthew 18, verse 2 to 4? We see here Jesus Christ calling a little child to him and placing the child in the middle of the disciples. And he says, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. We need to take that position of humility, of trust, of faith, of obedience. That is what should define every pathfinder as a child. That is what should be able to define all of us as young children, children of God, even though we are big. Moses later on grew to become a master guide. And for 40 years, Moses was leading the Israelites camping. You know, master guides should be able to know how to pitch tent. And the Israelites were moving all the way going towards Canaan. And where were they staying? Were they staying in their houses? They were in tents. And Moses is the one who was their master guide. The pathfinders that Moses led from Egypt were able to reach Canaan. The adults and the senior youth who left Egypt to go to Canaan, none of them reached Canaan. Have you ever asked why only the pathfinders were able to reach Canaan and those that are not pathfinders didn't reach? Pathfinders know what it means to obey. They know what it means to trust. They know what it means to follow instructions. And the best pathfinder is that one who follows instructions from their parents, judicious parents, parents that know the Lord. That should be able to describe us, should be able to define us. I thank the Lord that throughout my ministry, I've been in the youth ministry. And perhaps that's why I appear a little younger than I am. I'm an old man. Did I tell you that I'm a Sokoro? Scripture says, by beholding, you become changed. So if you keep on looking at young people, 
Opere, you remain young. But if you keep on looking at old people, somehow the body sympathizes with you and says, you know you're an old man. Can you get a walking stick? And then you get a walking stick and begin walking like an old man. You know, because you're an old man. The only meetings you attend are meetings of the old people. And so you become an old man because the body is sympathizing with you. The body knows how to sympathize with people. It's very kind to you. So keep on looking at young people and you'll keep young. Keep on looking at good things and you'll be, and you'll be good too. Have you ever known that even strangers get married and they begin to look alike? And so, when you're walking with your wife, somebody says, is this your younger sister? Of course, I hope they don't tell you, is this your older sister? <laughs> and so, if your wife doesn't look very much like you, you need to begin looking at her a little more than you look at her. Others begin, people will begin to wonder, who are you looking at? Moses kept looking at God. And so Moses had God in his mind, in his system, and he loved God. And when God was telling him, Moses, I see that these people are stiff-necked. They're wicked. All through and through. Can I destroy all of them? And from you, I'll get a new generation of people who obey the way you obey. Moses said, God, can this wicked thought go away from you? Can you imagine a worm like Moses telling God, can this wicked idea go away from you? What do the people say? That you brought us out up to the desert and you are unable to deliver us? Perish be the thought. Will your presence please God go with us so that wherever you are taking us, we'll go. Remember another person who said, wherever you go, I will go and your God will be my God. Do you remember that person? Ruth. To who was she speaking? To her mother-in-law, Naomi. We need to be such an inspiration that young people can want to look to us for an example. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, the Bible says, and that is after the disciples were trying to take away the children from Jesus Christ. They were coming to him that he may bless them. But the disciples were, hey, can mama? Take away these children. Because they knew some of these children are the children of teenage mothers. And people don't seem to want to respect teenage mothers and their children. Remember this. Teenage mothers might be accident parents, but the children are never an accident. Amen? They all come by the design of God and they've got God's signet on them. And the Bible says, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. That makes me remember someone, a friend of mine, when we were going for the first time to the Oshkosh Campari in 1999, I was at that time the youth director of Western Kenya Field, those sides of Eldoret, and we came here to the Union. A friend of mine whose name I'm not going to say, he was 52, and he was trying to get a visa. And at that time, it was at Peponi, somewhere near Karura Forest. And I told him, Muse, you know, I was younger. I was, I, I was just 35, maybe 30-something, and uh, he was already 52. Don't you have children that can go to this company? He looked at me and said, Kijana, I'm using my own money, and I'm going to this company. When children grow up, they'll use their own money, and they can go to the company, they can go to the U.S. if they want. I looked at that muse, and I said, really? Yes, and don't speak to me again about the children. Have earned this money and I'm going to America. Of course, finally, he got the visa. And when we reached Chicago, we were going somewhere for lunch. The Methodist pastor who was inviting us to his church for lunch before we proceed to Oshkosh, as we were going to watch the lunch, this Mose just fell down and said, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick. The pastor said, What is he suffering from? And the Mose said, Malaria, malaria. And the pastor said, Wah. We don't have malaria medication here. This old man is going to die. And he said, 
please call my daughter. Call my daughter. Where's your daughter? Oh, he's, she's in Iowa. She's in Iowa. And so somebody called the daughter. And the daughter said, that old man is very lucky. Put him on the next flight. I have got one dose remaining for malaria. He's very lucky. Of course, the museum knew how to dramatize. That was mere drama. He was not going to the Campari. He was simply going to the United States to go and stay. <laughs> it's very unfortunate that people who are not pathfinders are struggling to go to the Campari and leaving their children who are pathfinders behind. Why can they behave like Moses who said, we will go together with our children, together with our cows, together with our everything. Not a single hoof will remain in Egypt. Amen? Of course, he stayed there. And after some, he, he used to be a headmaster. He was a head teacher somewhere in a certain county that I did not say. And he stayed there. And there, and there. And then his wife now started having some debts. And later on, he said, how much do they owe you? I'll pay them once. That is the kind of attitude that are like us as parents never to have. Lest we become like Mr. Macquarie, who will invest a lot of money at home, build houses, and make the best bedroom available at the top. And when he comes home, he's too weak, he cannot even climb the stairs, his bedroom is located somewhere near the basement of his house, and his workmen are the ones that now go to live in that wonderful bedroom that has been building all these years. Hello? Hey! New Life Marines! I will go. We need to go with Jesus. And can we also go with our parents to Jesus Christ? That should be. I want us to look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23, the Amplified Bible says this. By faith, after his birth was hidden, by faith, Moses, after his birth, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful and divinely favored child and they were not afraid of the king's decree. Amen? They loved their son. If you love your son, if you love your daughter, you'll be able to take the risk to bring him up for Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ, there is safety. In Jesus Christ, there is every kind of privilege. And that's why in Jesus Christ, we pathfinders can safely go. We can be proud of being with our Savior because he cares. He loves us. Moses looked beyond the gorgeous palace. Moses looked beyond the monarch's crown. Moses looked at the high honors that are beyond the Egyptian empire at that time. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24, by faith, Moses, you know, he was, by the time he was getting instruction, by the time he was in the palace, he was much younger than Daniel, than Joseph, when they went into captivity, you remember Joseph went into captivity in Egypt again? And he becomes prime minister. You remember Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were much older than Moses when he went into uh, the palace. But for only 12 years that Moses spent with his mother, he was taken away from the Hebrew kindred that he, that he knew. But he had laid a foundation, the foundation of greatness. We see that in the book Education, page 61 up to page 63. Moses is a great leader, a powerful master guide. Moses saw better things. And we pathfinders can see better things in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to go with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to look 
But this young man in the New Testament, Barak Ogwedi Hawi, we're giving him a name because he hadn't been given a name. And his story is found in the book of John, chapter 6, from verse 1 all the way to 15. Jesus Christ has heard his friend, his first cousin has just been beheaded. You remember John the Baptist? He had been killed. Jesus is undergoing a lot of stress. He goes up to the mountain and he wants to have a retreat. In this country, we have got something called AAKU, which stands for Adventist Alumni of Colleges and Universities, of which Engineer Opera is the president. And we always go out for the annual retreat this year, 24th of December up to 31st. We shall be going to Rwanda. And uh, my wife and I are already planning to go. I do hope that the people of New Life are also planning to go. Jesus took his disciples for a retreat. But while they were in the retreat, the disciples started giving their reports of the things they've been doing and so on. And then a crowd started building because Jesus was a proud, a crowd puller. Amen? Wherever Jesus went, there was a big congregation following. And so, people are so many. And then Jesus says, these people are hungry. Actually, one of the disciples said, it's getting late. Can you dismiss the people? Can they go home? Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, even 200 denarii cannot be able to buy enough food for them to have just a little bite. But you know what? The mother of Barak, or Gwedi Hawi, had given him a lunch box. And in the lunch box, there was some food. Hey, what kind of food was in the lunch box? But find us, what was in the lunch box? Yes, what was it? Come around and answer. Come. Okay. Good boys. You'll give the number of the flying vegetables and you'll give the number of the edible mukate. So, so. Okay, how many? Two fish and five loaves of bread. Thank you. Nice boys. Go and get a seat. Very sharp flying marines of New Life Church. That was in the lunchbox. Do you know Judas was having a different kind of box? Judas Iscariot was having the cash box from which he used to help himself. Hello? Again, I'm coming back to the mothers. Mothers think about lunchbox while Judas thinks about the cash box. I'm not saying wild men. I'm Hello? While mothers are thinking about the lunch box, Judas is thinking about the cash box. What kind of thoughts? A mother that loves her baby, her child, thinks about the welfare of this child. And because this child has been obedient, he loves his mother, he obeys his mother, the mother provides him with food. And so he has five loaves. Five loaves of bread would be a lot. The kind of loaves that can fit in a small lunchbox are just sufficient kangumus for that little boy to eat and some little fish. I'm not sure whether it was grown up in Gege. Gege is the Nile patch. And I don't think it was Omena either. I think it was something in between Omena and Ngege. It could have been Fulu. Ladies and gentlemen. And so, Jesus tells the disciples, can you let the people sit down? Barak surrendered his lunchbox to Jesus Christ. But find us surrender your lunchbox to Jesus Christ. Why? Because while you are working on the plan of addition, 
Jesus works on the plan of multiplication. While Barak was adding the fish and the loaves, Jesus was multiplying the fish and the loaves for everybody to be able to eat. They sat down and they had a wonderful potluck, a wonderful meal, and they all were satisfied to the full. And nothing went to waste. Jesus said, can you collect everything that has remained? And how many, bo- how many baskets of fish and bread were left? Twelve of them. So every disciple had a basket of food to take home. Amen? I think uh, Barak knew what it means to be generous. He knew that in nature there is uh, generosity. He knew that in nature we have got something called photosynthesis. Can you say photosynthesis? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it well, is the process where green plants manufacture food. They have got little kitchens on their leaves. And in these kitchens, they're able to use the light which goes into the, their cells, which have got chloroplasts on them. Say chloroplasts. And the chloroplasts somehow are able, <laughs> using oxygen, able to produce starch, which we eat. And they produce carbon dioxide that goes around again for the plants to use. And the plants give us oxygen. So we have a symbiotic relationship with plants. Amen? We benefit from the plants and they benefit from us. As human beings, we need to be available to benefit from one another. We benefit you and you benefit us. That is the essence of living. And that's how in heaven we shall live. All of us benefiting one another. Not one person taking advantage of everybody else. We're talking about how we. And so the food increased. What do you think about the mother? What do you think the mother had when Howie told him, hey, mom, do you remember the lunchbox you gave me? It was able to feed everybody in that crowd. Over 10,000 people have eaten. Over 10,000? Yeah. Somebody said there are only 5,000. No, there are more than 5,000. The 5,000 are only the men. And they, some of them had come with their wives. And others had come with their children, like me. I went to that meeting. We are talking about the ability to benefit another person. Transpiration. Can you say transpiration? Is the process where the plants also are able to give to the atmosphere the water that passes through them. And the, and the vapor goes out there to the mountains to form relief rain. And it will rain, go to the rivers, all the way to the lakes and to the oceans. And again, the moisture collects and falls as convectional rain, and all of us are able to benefit. We are talking about the ability for us to benefit from one another. That is what it means to go with God. When we go with God, we benefit people. We spend and are willing to be spent for the cause of God. May we every day live to spend for Jesus Christ and to be spent for the cause of Jesus Christ. May we, the pathfinders, the new life, flying marines, be able to be the light of other pathfinders within the Nairobi region. By the way, it's true that New Life Church sends the greatest number of pathfinders to the international company in North America division. There's no dispute about that. What engineers say is true. And we need to be thankful to our Lord that has made it possible for us. I congratulate you, parents of New Life Church, and I congratulate you, the flying marines of New Life Church, for the ability of being able to go to this company as a people that come back to benefit your parents and other pathfinders. Let me tell you, let's not be like that old man. Let's go out, and when you go out, come back because it makes you international. Amen? And so, I want 
to invite those pathfinders that say, I will go with Jesus Christ wherever he asks me to go. And those parents that say, I will allow my children to go with Jesus wherever he wants them to go, to please stand as we do a prayer. We want to pray. We're praying. Those marine pathfinders, fly marines, pathfinders from New Life Church and their parents who want to go with Jesus Christ wherever he leads them to go. And we're praying. Our Father, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We give you the glory for the New Life Flying Marines, for their parents, for their guardians, for their pastor and associate pastors, for the elders in charge of the Pathfinder ministry and of the youth ministry, and pray that you'll continue to lead and guide them, and that wherever you go, these Pathfinders will be able to go, and that every day, They'll organize their life in such a way as to live for you now and to live for you in eternity. Do bless them with vibrant health and that they'll be an example worthy of emulation that other pathfinders and other churches can benchmark from New Life Church here. We thank you for them. We thank you for these parents. Bless and strengthen them all. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome.